Hey everybody, welcome to Bones Collector. And on this video, I'm going to talk about the changes that Lori and I made to our top 10 of 2020. Now 2020, of course, was a freak of a year and we didn't get to any conventions or anything because they canceled them all. So playing games was very difficult. Uh, you could do it online, um, which I don't enjoy whatsoever doing. And you could buy games in order to play them. And we bought a few and Hopefully we were very selective and, and we were very selective in the ones that we purchased and I think we ended up keeping most of them. Hopefully this year uh, we've got a, already got a convention in September, the Escape Winter Convention in September here in Orlando and man we can't wait. It's been been over a year. It'd be a year and a half since we went to our last board game convention and that's just a, a resource and an avenue for us to play more games, uh, games that we're curious about. Uh, because maybe we something we don't like about the game, but we want to play it and see why everybody's talking about it. So you get the chance to play games and decide whether those games are good enough for you to to put them in their lib in your in your library. And that's that's all that matters is if you like the game, and that's why we play those at conventions and play as many as we possibly can when we go to conventions. But we had a bunch of games that we were able to get our hands on that we hadn't played before and now it's time to give this update. I know it's way late, I'm sorry, but we just, uh, some of them were late getting here and and then I want to play them two, three, four, five, six times before I decide where I want them to go. If, if they're good enough to be in the top ten. So let's get started with it. Enough jabber John. And I want to start with number ten and it is Patchwork Christmas by Uwe Rosenberg. It was in a on the list as an honorable mention. Laura and I both adore that game. We played Patchwork uh, years ago and enjoyed it, really liked it. But just an unappealing, <laughs> for whatever reason we thought it was an unappealing appearance, the game. But the Patchwork Christmas now, we, can, we really, really enjoy that. And you have these little gift tiles that are on various parts of the track as you're going along. And if you land exactly on one of those, you get to take that little gift it looks like a gift's got a ribbon on it and stuff and then you can put it on the onesies on your board because you need those really badly and so you're planning as you're moving on the track to make sure you land on those if you can and because it's very beneficial I think I did the best I've ever done I covered everything but three spaces and if you haven't played patchwork you're minus points for spaces you don't cover so you want to cover as many as you can and, and I, that was my bet I was so proud of that only and I'm sure people have filled it up. I, I, I've never done it, but uh, we really, really enjoy Patchwork by Uwe Rosenberg. It's number 10 of 2020, and I felt like putting it in there. And I, I want to stop for a second and just say, the games that were on our list before, I still love. Aqualin, Ugly Christmas Sweaters. Hey, those are terrific games, that, especially Aqualin. You can play that game twice in 30 minutes. Number 10, Patchwork Christmas. Number 9, all the way down to number nine is Dwellings of Eldervale. I think I had, yeah, I had it number five uh, initially. And I enjoyed Dwellings of Eldervale. Not really our style of game, but it was fun. Had the minis that made noises and sounds when they rushed your space. And it was a wonderful production. I think game trays, all, everything came in game trays. And so the setup, I tell you, the best thing about Dwellings was setting that game up. You, you're, you're playing in five minutes because of the way the, the game was produced. You know, everything's in trays and you just take it out of the box and you're, you're playing uh, almost instantly. But it, we really, really, it's a worker placement game. If you're familiar with Manhattan Project Energy Empire where you're placing workers and taking them back, uh, only when you take them back you can place them also then and do different functions. So that's pretty cool. But I really like Dwellings of Eldervale. Don't, don't, don't tell anybody, I, hey, Bones Flagger didn't like, I like Dwellings of Eldervale. It was just a really big box. And a fantasy theme uh, didn't is just not our cup of tea, but it was fun to play while we had it, and it's gone out of here now. But it's number nine for 2020, Dwellings of Eldervale by Luke Laurie. Number eight, Castles of Tuscany by Stefan Fail. Did I say failed? <laughs> it's Castles of Tuscany by Stefan Fell. Sorry, uh, I'm tired. But hey, there's the back of the box, and there's the front of the box. It's by Aaliyah Games. And this is probably, 
It's definitely one of Stefan Fell's lightest games, but that doesn't stop it from being a whole lot of fun. And you know why a game like this is fun? is because it works flawlessly. It just is a smooth playing game. And you can learn it very quickly, and the light comes on very quickly when you're playing this game. Because this man is a great board game designer, and I can't say enough about his board games. Obviously. I mean, I just <laughs> I enjoy playing them. They, they play themselves. And, I, and you can play a, you'll play a board game that's clumsy. I, I call it being clumsy, and, I, and I've played many of those. And, and for whatever reason, we just don't care for those, especially when games like this are available. And this game, you can sit down and play it in 45 minutes, two-player, maybe even, probably even 30 minutes. And it plays similarly to Castles of Burgundy. Lori pointed that out to me. And it has a, a funky scoring track. You can see it on the... Uh, a kind of a funky scoring mechanism and uh, some card mechanics and you're going to select tiles that are going to give you certain benefits on your player board and it's a lot of fun. I really like it by Aaliyah Games. That's Castles of Tuscany by Stefan Feld. Number seven, Rococo Deluxe. It was at number three and it was a reissue of a game that you know, was hard to find and we had never played Rococo so we made sure that we got on board with Rococo Deluxe so that we could get a copy of it. First of all, the theme is amazing. Louis the 15th or whatever is having a ball and, and he's he sending out invitations. Everybody's gonna dress to the nines and, and it's just fashion for a theme. And it's a rare and creative way to uh, design a board game, Rococo Deluxe. And we have decided to get rid of that game <laughs> because we came across a copy, a uh, uh, first, print run copy of Rococo, which is in a smaller box. Rococo Deluxe, big box. Original Coco, little box. So we like the little box, and I really preferred the, the card art in the first edition uh, rather than the Deluxe. But both games play the same. They're magnificent, and no matter what format that you have, and that's Rococo. It's in my, I think it's in my top 20 all time, Rococo. That was number seven, Rococo Deluxe. It wasn't number three. Okay, number six. It's a game by Sherry, Shay S. and Isra C. That's the board game designers. The game is called Red Cathedral. And I had seen Red Cathedral on YouTube all over the place and heard people talking about it. Some people liked it. Some people were kind of lukewarm on it. And after I watched it played, I knew I was going to like it because it's right up our alley. First of all, look at that tiny box. That's pretty neat. And it plays like a great big Euro game. It's a, a dice game, which I really, really like. Okay, so you have a rondelle in the center of the board, and you're going to roll the dice and put them on the spaces. Hey, you're building a red cathedral. You can see it going up right there. You're building the red cathedral, and you're going to complete the uh, necessary requirements of a card in order to play it or turn it over up in the cathedral and put your marker on it and get the points for that. This game is amazing. It plays one to four, so there's a solo mode in there. Uh, ten and up. It says 80 minutes. Lori and I can play this in about an hour. And it's a whole lot of fun, man. I'm telling you what, that's a great game, Red Cathedral. And I made it into my top ten for 2020. I'm glad I picked it up at number six. At number five, a new game on the list also is Paris by Kramer and Kiesling. These guys had a great year, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But at number five right now, Paris, and there's the back of the box. You're building up around the city of Paris, around the Arc de Triomphe, the different districts of Paris where you place your wooden keys and are requiring resources to complete tiles, and you have a track around the outside full of bonus tiles that you move on, and you will be selecting those bonus tiles as you play the game. Once you go past it, though, you can't go back. So you have to make, that's another thing you have to think about in this game, is whether you want to take that bonus tile or skip over it. So it's very, uh, the decisions are nice and juicy in this game, and it's a lot of fun. I knew I was going to like it, but whatever. I mean, Wolf, uh, Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling, two of my favorite designers, uh, and that's Paris. It's number five on my list of 2020 games. I love everything about this game. Yeah, it's a good one. Number four, Bonfire by Stefan Feld. And it was number four in the list originally. I you really should just cover the changes, but I, there were so many changes, 
I have to go through the whole list. But Bonfire by Stefan Feld remains at number four. The more I play it, the more I love it. It's a more complex game. It's, it's up there with the Forum Trajanum, that kind of uh, level of complexity. But a magnificent game to play. And Laura and I really, really love it. We've played it a couple times. It's Bonfire. Number three, Tangaro. It was number two. It got knocked down by another game. And I'll tell you what game that is in just a second. But Tangaro is a wonderful game. We just got done playing it today and we played it again a couple days ago so we played it two times the last three days i love that game there's so much to think about and i commented to laurie and tangaro i think that game makes my head spin more than any game we have uh, it's just uh, it's dizzying the choices that you have to make when you're playing that game okay number two is a new game on the list and it is by kramer and keesling also renature and these guys again had a terrific year with paris and renature this is pl like playing chess with dominoes and plants and it's a to me, just I, to, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Free Nature is in everyone's library by the end of next year. That's the back of the box. And beautiful dominoes that you're going to play on the board to surround areas, and then you're going to put your plants off your player board in those areas to score points. But the funky thing about this game is you not only have your player color plants, but you also have neutral plants that you're going to use to kind of slow down your opponent. You have to do some thinking as to when and where to use those. This game is just, I cannot believe how much I fell in love with Free Nature. I did not expect to like it that much. It's amazing. There's a track at the top of the board and there's each one of the different animals on that track and wherever the marker is, that particular animal is wild. So you can use it anywhere on the board. It gives you something else to think about. Oh my gosh, I could not believe this game. It's incredible. Kramer and Keesling, man, these guys are amazing. Again, pro oh, man, if they're not my favorite board game, is Stefan Fell, I, I don't know who it would be. But man, that's a great game, you guys. Renature. It's one that plays differently every time. And it just, I mean, it's an abstract strategy game. I just love that game. And Calico remains number one because, and I've said it before, it's just a game that even if you don't play board games, you can play this game and you'll learn to love it. Calico, I can't believe it's not on everybody's number one, but that's the back of the box. A nice production, double layered player boards. Look at that kitty on the front. Is that a cute cat or what? Looks like my cat, uh, sort of. No, it doesn't at all actually. <laughs> when my cat curls up though, she does that and she's really cute just like that. But not gold. But not gold. She's like, she's, a, she's just a generic gray and white cat. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, Calico, what a great game, designed by Kevin Russ, and this is in AEG. AEG, yeah. Yeah, AEG and flat, flat out. out Games. Okay, and we did back Cascadia, so we're waiting on that uh, from Kickstarter. If it's as good as this game, this was an amazing game. We just love to play. It's a, a puzzle that'll hurt your head a little bit, but that's okay, because that's fun. And, and it happens very quickly, so Calico, number one, still uh, the, the champ from 2020. Okay, some of the games that left my top, our top 10 of 2020 were Cloud Age by Alexander Pfister, wonderful game. New York Zoo by Uwe Rosenberg, wonderful game. Fossilis, and I talked about Aqualin and Ugly Christmas Sweaters. Still, all those games are fantastic. I, I wouldn't tell you about them if they weren't. But uh, yeah, our top 10, let me run it down real quick one more time. Number 10, Patchwork. Number 9, Dwellings. Number 8, Castles of Tuscany. Number 7, Rococo Deluxe. Number 6, Red Cathedral, number five, Paris, number four, Bonfire, number three, Tungaro, number two, Renature. Ooh, sweet game. And number one, Calico. Yeah, what a great year. 2020, those games will all be in my library for a long, long time, except Dwellings. I got rid of it because the box was just too big for me. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll see you later. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the, below the video, and we'll try to get back to each and every one of you. I hope you're all doing well and being well and uh, having a good time at life, please remember to keep on board gaming. It's the best hobby on the planet. Like and subscribe, please. And I'll see you the next time on The Bones Collector. I love every one of you. Have a great time board gaming. Bye-bye.